I'll tell you a little story. May as well. It might help you. Okay, it's a, it's a story of a couple named Suhaila and Farooq. And they were married romantically. They loved each other very much. And um, it was in the time of the, I think, Abd Aziz's Caliphate, the fifth righteous caliph, when there were no more poor Muslims. Everyone was wealthy. Uh, not Muslims, sorry. Nobody was poor. There were no poor people. Because Islamic economics, finance, and system really did work. Uh, anyways, um, think of a romance like that. So Hila and Farooq are married. They're together for three months. The call of jihad is made. Farooq has to take off and disappear. He leaves her a little bit of money, about 3,000 dirhams, and says to her, make do with this for three months. I'll be back in three months. There's a treasure chest of 30,000 dinars, which is equivalent to 2 million pounds in his house. And he says to her, don't touch that. It's Amana. I'll be back in three months. Because that's what they did. The soldiers would go and come back. Three months went on. Six months went on. Nine months went on. In that time, she found bearing with a child. A year went on. She gave birth to a boy. No sign of photo. A year and a half went on. Two years went by. Two and a half years went by. Some man came back from battle and said, I saw Faru fall. Now she knows he is dead. And so now she opens the treasure chest of two million pounds. Until then she obeyed and didn't touch it. Three thousand dirhams for that long, subhanAllah. She stretched it. Thirty years go by. She's looking after this boy. She's had a son. She's looking after him. She's paying for his education. She's getting him, you know, looked after, etc. Thirty years go by. Now we're in Medina. This happened in Medina. Thirty years she's thinking of Faru. He was such a great man, my great hero. He fought jihad and was killed. You know, he's just this amazing guy. She loved him. When he was going, he thought twice, he looked back, she pushed him out the door. She said, have you no fear of Allah? Seek the Jannah and I'll see you there in Jannah. She was a righteous woman. She pushed him out, said, go. And he went. Anyways, 30 years go by. Here's Medina. Let's leave the country. Google Earth. Go all the way over to China, okay? We're on the outskirts of the Muslim lands. We're in China, on the borders. Back down onto the earth. Nighttime, fire count. Army soldiers defending the borders of the Muslims. And amongst them is a man sitting on the bridge. And he is doing what's called ribat, protecting the soldiers while they sleep. And he's having a lookout. He's looking up at the stars, the sky, he's feeling a bit romantic, and he's feeling a bit of love with Allah. And he's thinking, he's thinking, all of a sudden he remembers he has his wife he was married to. I wonder how she's doing. What happened? Did she marry on? Did she die? Did she move on? Did she there? Thought starts going mad. Thirty years of this jihad for the sake of Allah. And he marched on and on and he was never killed in battle. For anyone who thinks battle will take your life, thirty years this guy's still alive. It's Faru out on the outskirts of China. When he went, he couldn't stop. The sweetness of defending the Ummah and working for Allah, he couldn't go back. He's on the outskirts of China, but now the thoughts. He's older, he's wiser, he's just not that young, passionate man anymore. He's thinking, my wife, my wife, my wife. That's it. He takes permission from his commander in the morning, hops on his horse from China, he's riding like the wind all the way back to Medina. The closer he gets, his heart is thumping, man. He's going mad, he's going through the Persian route, the silk routes, he's coming all the way back through Iraq. The closer he gets, the more mad he goes, what if she's not alive anymore? What if she's married again? All these things are driving him insane. He gets to the city of Medina. Before going mad in love, running back to his wife, he remembers the sunnah of the Prophet He's a righteous man. He doesn't just go home. He goes to the masjid to pray his two rakats. That's what you're supposed to do when you come back from a trip. He went to the masjid Nabi, prayed two rakat, saw it was time for Asr, but what's the point going home? I'll wait, pray Asr, and go. While he's waiting, he notices the scholars of Medina. Keep in mind, this is the time of Abdul Aziz, subhanAllah, the ulama, the knowledge, Allah, the tafsir, the stories. And they're sitting in different patches, and people in white gathered around them. The scholars looking beautiful, mashallah. One of them shined out out of all of them, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. He was one of the best knowledgeable people you can imagine. Sheikh Abdul Rahman is the most eloquent of speakers. He's amazed by him. Adan, Asr, Salah, he finished now, right, going home. He's rushing home. As soon as he gets to his house, when he gets to his house, he noticed another man going in. He's thinking he's out. He flips out. He's an Arab. He's got fear. He's got jealousy. He said, hey, 
defender it goes to the man and grabs him. This is my house, this is my house. They begin to fight. The city comes in, people gather around, they're like, hey, leave my lord, it's his house. And he's like, I am for all, this is my house. Inside the house is an old woman. And she's sitting there. And she hears the sounds. Could it be? She covers up, she runs out, and she sees him, she shouts, This is my husband, Farooq, leave him alone. He's been away in jihad for 30 years, only now has he returned. People began to weep. They realized it. Farooq and Sahela embrace in love. And they're together, and they're telling stories. They run inside. Now they're laughing, they're joking, they're crying. Everything's coming out. Oh, Farooq, I'm so much older than you. Time has changed. The knowledge of the theme, the way it's been spread. Did you see anyone in particular? One really stood out. What would you give to be that man? I would give anything to be that knowledge. Would you give 30,000 dinars? Yes, I would. What if that was your son? And he said, no. And he said, that's your son. His son was the best scholar of Medina because it was halal money and she spent it all instead of shopping online. She was raising her son in the best Islamic education. Two million pounds she spent in that time. That much money on his education and today. What do we spend on Islam? Baruch and Sohela, she said that's your son. Baruch goes mad. He comes out the house screaming, Sheikh Abdurrahman is my son. I am Baruch. And he's just dancing. You know, he's excited. Abdurrahman comes. They call him. They say, what? He says, I am his son. Where is he? The man says, I'm Sheikh Abdurrahman. And when he sees him, he realizes the man he was fighting with in the beginning. He was going to his house. That was his son. And he hugs him and he embraces. And the city comes and sees this father jumping up for joy. My son is no ordinary boy. He is Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And everyone starts to weep. Everyone is emotional with him. And one of the people that wept, that came to stop the arguing in the first place, was the great Imam Malik. From the Maliki Madhab. What was he doing there? What was he doing there in that crowd? Imam Malik was the student of Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Farooq. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ 